Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And thank you all for coming today. And a special thank you to the Fort Saskatchewan Chamber of Commerce for hosting this annual event. It is always a pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to our business community and regional stakeholders about the city of Fort Saskatchewan. I value the role that you play in making Fort Saskatchewan a complete community by providing the necessary goods, services, and employment opportunities that really do make us the envy of the region. This continues to be one of my favorite events of the year because I get to talk about the great accomplishments of our community and take time for us to collectively reflect about our accomplishments and where we are at this point in time, what we've done over the past 12 months, and where we think we're going to be in the months and years ahead. So looking back over the past year, I was reminded municipal services have on the lives of our citizens. With everything and every time that we spend time debating and discussing, I am continuously reminded that first and foremost, that we as a municipality are in the people business. Our role is to support people, to provide the basic necessities and services, to enhance the lives and promote well-being through programming, and to support local business and industry to ensure our citizens have services and employment opportunities. The Council's role, job is to set policy and make decisions that build a progressive, engaged community that will thrive well into the future. By building a thriving community, we continue to create a bright future for the people of Fort Saskatchewan. So last year, Council approved our 2018 to 2022 strategic plan that is one of our most important pieces of work for a new Council. It will guide us in making our decisions now and into the future. So our four key strategic priorities are, one, being positioned for growth, two, excellence in government, three, a vibrant and thriving community, and four, well-planned and maintained municipal infrastructure. So managing our growth must be a cr critical focal point for our city. Between 2011 and 2016, the Edmonton metropolitan area was Canada's second fastest growing region at 13.9%. And during that time, Fort Saskatchewan was the 10th fastest municipality in Canada for cities with more than 5,000 people, and we are still growing. The 2018 census showed our growth year after year was 3.11%. And this speaks volumes that we must be doing something right. Because I am told that when people choose the community that they want to live in to make their home, they do it, they choose the quality of life first and jobs second. Of course, we are very fortunate to be the largest municipality in the Alberta's industrial heartland that has provided our sub-region with a relatively stable economy despite the challenges we know exist throughout Alberta. With growth come certain challenges, primarily with land absorption. And for several years now, you have heard me say, we have been working on our growth strategy and we have been negotiating with Strathcona County on an annexation agreement. Well, annexation takes time and it takes patience. And I thank this council and the previous two councils who have all worked diligently to plan our future expansion. So I am pleased to say that last June, we reached an annexation agreement with Strathcona County for an uncontested annexation of 952 hectares of land, and that should sustain us into the future for approximately the next 35 years. So thank you, Strathcona. In addition to agreeing to the annexation application, we also signed an alliance agreement which outlines a framework for 
future discussions on how we can build our intermunicipal relationship. Our future goal is to explore all avenues to find partnerships that will benefit both municipalities and increase our efficiency and effectiveness. And again, I want to thank Strathcona County for their understanding through this process, and we look forward to continue, continue working together to build not just vibrant communities, but a vibrant and strong subregion. So as we plan for our future, strong planning is going to be an absolute necessity. So in 2019, we are taking the first steps to update our Municipal Development Plan. The Municipal Development Plan continues to communicate the long-term desired land use for a community. It serves as a high-level blueprint that will take the shape and take what Fort Saskatchewan will look like into the future. So there is going to be a broad engagement process and we as council encourage all of you to get involved in the process, have your say, as this document is critical in determining how our community will grow. Now looking beyond planning, our role is to provide the best quality of life we can for the people who live in Fort Saskatchewan, which includes building and maintaining excellent infrastructure. So what does this mean for our businesses and citizens? So simply put, it means we engage you through surveys and studies. We do our best to prioritize what the community's needs and wants are, and prioritize and balance these through our long and short-term budgets. And as we reflect on 2018, a few of these highlights included opening the Taurus Field, a high-performance sports field for local football, soccer, and rugby players, and it has already attracted new games and new tournaments that we were never able to attract before. So it will not only provide a home for our football teams, a true facility, to host their games, but it will also enhance sports tourism in Fort Saskatchewan. And we know that when we attract visitors from outside of Fort Saskatchewan, our community and our local businesses benefit. The reopening of the renovated curling club. And I hope you'll agree with me that this facility looks better now than when it was new. And we can be proud that it is Again, a first-rate facility that local and visiting curlers will enjoy for many years to come. Since it has been opened, I've spent quite a few hours in there because this year my husband and my grandson have decided to take up curling. So it's wonderful to see a renewed energy coming in our community. The opening of the new transit park and ride facility. This will enhance our public transit system because we all know a complete community needs to provide opportunities for all people to access programs and services within their community. And for those people who do not drive, have a vehicle, or even have a license, according to Pathways Out of Poverty, public transit is a critical infrastructure investment. And I was very proud yesterday as I stopped by Dr. Turner Lodge to see the Seniors Route 584 as it kicked off. The smiles on their faces were something that we can all be proud of. You know, they were excited. They were going to get to go to Giant Tiger, out to Ross Creek, to Walmart, to some of the professional places. They were able to go visit their friends in the different Seniors Lodges. So to me, that was money that was well spent and they're thrilled. Opening, implementing the Fort Report online customer reporting tool for our citizens as a one-stop shop for our citizens to ask questions, report issues, and offer suggestions for improvement is something that I think all of Council is proud of. In the first year of operation, the system processed and resolved 4,500 service requests. Now that doesn't mean that we had a whole bunch that many issues. 
What it meant is that our citizens had greater ease and access to ask their questions, but it also got their questions answered quickly. We transitioned to the monthly utility building, billings and updated our policies to give our customers confidence in our water delivery system. It has been very successful and Council is committed to the ongoing upgrades required to the system that will provide immediate alerts when customers are having unusual water loss. And of course, Administration and Council has spent countless hours this year, last year, on preparing the municipal legislation required for the legalization of cannabis. When you're dealing with uncertainty about how federal legislation is going to affect our community, it required extensive exploration, discussion, and debate, and the creation of new bylaw options. Sometimes it felt like that's where we were spending most of our time last year, but it was time well spent because I am proud to say that Fort Saskatchewan was one of the only few municipalities to have the smoking and land use bylaws in place before the October 17th legalization date. That meant we were ready for the two newly legalized businesses on day one, placing us ahead of the curve even though it was a contentious issue. So as we look forward to 2019, we can also look forward to renovations being completed on the Harbour Pool for the much needed addition of the inclusive Universal Change Room. Set to open soon, the improvements will bring a safe and welcoming space for all users that could not be accommodated in the old change rooms. The expansion of the skateboard park this year, bringing the much needed improvement to this amenity for our local youth who have been waiting patiently for this to become a reality. Renovations are getting underway on the Fort Saskatchewan Gymnastics Club's new permanent home and getting them moved in before the end of the year. So in 2019, we're also going to be doing a deep dive on the Dow Centennial Center site to explore what potential designs would be for a future aquatic center and performance arena, what the cost would be, and if and when we can afford to build them. Construction of a new facility for the Protective Services Building for our Animal Control Program, upgrades to the road to the point of pins towards the dog park as part of our annexation agreement with Strathcona County. Planning and designs for additional lanes on Veterans Way. Upgrades to the Bulk Water Reservoir, West Park Reservoir and the Bulk Water Station. Implementation of the 24-hour staffed fire hall. As we know, Safety is a priority in Fort Saskatchewan, and we want to ensure that we are meeting the 10-minute response time and meeting the needs of the people in Fort Saskatchewan. <coughs> we are proud of what we have accomplished to date and what we have planned for the future. Of course, we are always reminded of the elephant in the room that every piece of infrastructure that is built, every program, every service, has a cost associated with it. There's no other way to say it. Council has been working hard to ensure we utilize our MSI funding to build or renovate infrastructure, thereby avoiding taking on additional debt. And as a growing mid-sized city, we work to keep our taxes as affordable as possible, but we know we are going to be challenged from time to time as the time comes when we are faced with a new or different service. Implementing the 24-hour staff fire hall is a prime example of this, and it did have a significant impact on our budget, but I can assure you it was the right time and the right decision. I'm sure this won't be our first transitional service or our last, but I can assure you these, deci these decisions are made in the best interest of our community and unfortunately, everything does have a cost. 
Of course, our role in supporting our citizens is not just about building infrastructure, but it's about being there, advocating for the needs of our community and to our region. When the citizens said they wanted more retail shopping opportunities, our economic development team has been hard at work on business retention and attraction in 2018. And I'm told that the city has issued a record number of business licenses, and the data tells us that our community has more locally owned and operated businesses than ever before. And as we grow in population, our community continues to gain more interest in the retail sector for being a community of choice. When our school board trustees said, we need to ensure we have schools that meet the needs of our growing population, we lobbied alongside of them to the province, and it did pay dividends as we celebrated the official opening of two new schools, the South Point Elementary Kindergarten to Grade 9 and the St. Andre Bissette Catholic High School. But we haven't stopped there. We have been told we need to plan for more schools sooner than later. The city has proactively purchased land for a future elementary school in West Park. Plus, we are currently determining where there could be one additional future school site and where it may be located. Of course, the most anticipated infrastructure upgrades is not even within our physical boundaries. But we continue to work with the provincial government as they complete the upgrades on the intersections of Highway 1537 and 825 and the twinning of the Highway 15 bridge. I am told the detailed design for the bridge expansion is now complete and we believe there could be shovels in the ground as early as this spring. Our council, in partnership, with Sturgeon County has approved additional funding for the project to include a dedicated pedestrian crossing. So finally, the Sturgeon County side of the river will be safely accessible to people by multiple modes of transportation. And this will greatly <coughs> enhance our city's greatest treasure, our River Valley system. Well, I know everybody is excited about this project, it has provided for Saskatchewan with an unexpected opportunity. We anticipate the province will excavate the fill required for the bridge twinning from our Fort Centre lands, thereby creating the long-awaited storm pond, or ponds, I'm not sure if there's going to be one or two, that could kickstart the development of other recreational amenities in the Fort Centre Park. Of course, you can't talk about a complete and thriving community without addressing our housing infrastructure. We continue to advocate for affordable housing options. Fort Saskatchewan and in Fort Saskatchewan, we have a strong partnership with Heartland Housing Foundation and the city provided land for a future affordable housing complex. And thanks to the great work of our past and present members who sit on the Heartland Foundation, funding has been secured to build an 83-unit affordable apartment complex that will be located close to Dr. Turner Lodge. I would like to thank the members who sit on this board and the provincial government when we had for the recent funding announcement. It takes Many years sometimes, lots of hours of work, and lots of lobbying and advocating, so great job. We, we will also see the completion of the Jimmy Carter Habitat for Humanity project in our Siena neighborhood, which will finally see the completion of 16 affordable homes built for families in our community. So as each piece of this infrastructure is built, it is up to Council to work with City Administration to effectively and efficiently manage the programs and services to ensure that we are getting the maximum benefit for our citizens. Now looking beyond our borders, Council will continue building relationships and seeking partnerships with our regional neighbours. And one of the most important areas that we continue to emphasize is economic development. 
potential investors in our region. They don't care where our municipal boundaries are. But we can't be seen as fighting amongst ourselves when it comes to this investment. So we know that when we work together, we're going to be stronger in attracting new investment to this region. And I am proud to serve as the chair of the Alberta's Industrial Heartland Association <clears throat> as we work to market our advantage to major petrochemical investors throughout the world. This partnership includes Strathcona County, Sturgeon County, Lamont County, the City of Edmonton, and of course us, the City of Fort Saskatchewan, as we all continue to promote the region as a centre of excellence for petrochemical development on the international stage. We have lobbied hard with the provincial and federal governments to increase our competitiveness while enhancing their understanding of the true impact of limited access to markets for our products. We presented our opportunities to many members of the provincial and federal governments as possible as we focused on educating others that Heartland is the heart of opportunity. Our advocacy is starting to show proven results. We have seen $40 billion dollars of construction in the Elmer's Industrial Heartland over the last 20 years and we are well on our way to our goal of another 30 billion dollars by 2030. So the heart of the opportunity paper that we submitted, if anybody wants a copy of this, please contact our staff and they'll make sure you get one. So Interpipeline is in the process of constructing their $3.5 billion Heartland Petrochemical Facility, just beyond our northern border. Pembina recently announced their final investment decision that they will now proceed with a $4.5 billion <coughs> propane dehydrogenation probe plant and a polypropylene upgrading facility just across the river in Sturgeon County. And Pembina's CEO was recently quoted in the news as saying they have completed a comprehensive study on the opportunities for an ethane-based project and they could partner with an industry expert to move another large-scale project forward. Sherrod is currently <coughs> studying the economics on a demonstration plant to pilot new technologies for bitumen upgrading right here in the city of Fort Saskatchewan. We believe construction will begin once a positive investment decision has been reached. Value Creation Inc. was recently approved for a $440 million loan guarantee from the provincial government to construct a $2 billion commercial scale upgrader in Strathcona County. And of course, we welcome the news of the commissioning of the $8 billion Northwest Refinery. When you say billion, it really has an impact. We look forward to more good news in the coming days or weeks ahead, as we believe that the province is set to announce the results of the second round of the Petrochemical Diversification Program, which carries the possibility of providing financial incentives or other major products, projects within the region. The province did receive more than 20 proposals for over $60 billion worth of projects. Many of those could be located right here in the heartland. There is tremendous opportunity facing our community and this region. And as we know, we can't all be strictly focused on oil and gas sector. So as such, the city has joined with 14 other municipalities in the region to form Edmonton Global as a collaborative effort by the region to take a renewed approach to diversifying our economy and to take a team approach towards advocacy and economic development. We are also active members in the Edmonton Metropolitan Region Board where we work to create plans and programs that promote consistency and continuity in our land use planning and infrastructure planning. So as we talk about the state of the city, I hope that you will agree with me 
that there are many positive signs for our community, which is why our population growth has been so strong. People want to be part of what we have here. The quality of life, the opportunity for good jobs, but most of all, they want the sense of belonging to a community that cares about its people. As we continue to plan and manage our growth, we must remain true to our values. If we want to be more than a city with good plans, it's going to take a council and a community to join together in making some courageous decisions about our growth and development. Council cannot make these decisions alone, and that's why your input is so important. Building a future for the people that we serve is the work that we as a council have put before us, but in reality, it is the support of our community that is going to carry this work forward for generations to come. <coughs> the City of Fort Saskatchewan is a caring community. And what do we care about? We care about our people. We care about each other. We are proud of what we are, and we are proud about the things that we do. And I look forward to sharing this journey with all of you over the next few years, now and for the next few years. I thank you for coming out to listen to this presentation today, and I encourage you to get involved with your council, get involved in the planning and studies. And if you have questions about this presentation here today, we have our economic development team that would be very pleased to talk to you about it. We have our CAO, uh, Troy Fleming, joining us here today, and he is pleased to talk about some of the plans and studies that are coming forward. Join in, be part of our community, be proud of what we have and how we serve our citizens and businesses in Fort Saskatchewan. Thank you for coming out today. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you for this attention. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mayor Gail Ketcher. Appreciate you taking the time to update us. That was great.